Hello, it's Haley with the Armageddon Report. You know, given that it's almost mid-January, you'd think you'd be fairly safe from tornadoes. And of course, if you're up in like Montana, you know, you probably are. But yesterday, potential tornado in North Carolina. And this, of course, brings it back to the fact of why it's always good to have your weather radio. Well, first off, to own one, period. And then secondly, to make sure it's on and has batteries and so on and so forth, even if it's the dead of winter. So what does it mean, potential tornado? Because I saw some comments somewhere, was like, well, what else could have done it? It wasn't the rain. Yes, well, there are other things. Maybe you've heard of it. It's a little thing called wind. Wind can be quite powerful. And microbursts, I'm not sure. Microbursts, if you're not familiar, it's basically like, uh, I, I don't know how it happens, but a whole bunch of air descends out of a storm cloud and then it spreads out in like a circular, circular type fashion. So I'm not sure. I would have tend to think that they don't classify that as a tornado because then how would they put it on the enhanced Fujita scale? But anyway, luckily, no fatalities. Casualties, yes. And that's because I learned the difference between casualties. I used to think it meant fatalities, but no, they are not synonymous. Casualties are fatalities and injuries. That's why it's called like the casualty ward elsewhere instead of the emergency room or whatever it is they call it. I have no idea. Anyway, more than 50 homes damaged. I also read a report elsewhere, 60 plus and 15 injured after possible tornadoes. Now, of course, another thing I've read, did they have any warning? So, the answer is yes. All of these hail events out here were for non-severe. One inch is the threshold, so let me click on that randomly. So that was quarter inch hail, so the train spotter called that in. But that, obviously, if it were an inch, you know, then that would have been a severe thunderstorm warning. And that's what the yellow was. And then the reds are tornado warnings. So we have a potential tornado here. Train spotter reports a possible tornado on ground. And then something over here. Emergency manager. So, to answer the question, yes, they did have some warning. Now, of course, if you didn't have a weather radio or you weren't watching the news, then yeah, you probably didn't have any warning. And of course, I will admit that I would probably be just as shocked if a tornado happened in mid-January for me, you know, given that I'm in Hawaii, right? <laughs> I wish. Anyway, so, you know, I feel for the human condition of not paying attention, but you should pay attention anyway. Right, did I cover everything? Yes. Oh, right. If you want to see your own, if obviously if you live there, you know where to get your news coverage. But if you're interested in reading up on the North Carolina tornado, what you do is you go to Google News search and put in the words North Carolina tornado and it will return some tornado related results to you. And now let's refresh this again. Southern California is the most recent earthquake near the east coast of Honshu, Japan is the biggest one today. But I already looked at this and the largest MMI was, let's see, Max CDI. I'm going to have to find out what the difference is. Anyway, let's guess that MMI and CDI are the same thing and then it'd be a four. Light shaking, no damage. So, you know, Japan, they're like, they're ready for it, you yeah. know. And that sucks. It, it's good and it's bad, you know, because they have earthquakes so much, they're very good. The uh, building codes are up to snuff, but at the same time, that means they get a gigantic ton of earthquakes. Anywho, high temperatures today, getting quite cold in the coldness, spreading the land. And then the low temperatures tonight. I think this is the first time maybe that we've seen this much white in one area, negative 21 on the border. But if you drive all the way from there down to Florida, quite nice, 63, yeah. Active weather things is the winter storm rolling on in. And this would probably be fire. Yeah, red flag warning, extreme fire danger. Here's probably freeze warnings and hard freeze warnings and flood warnings. And frizz warnings, water is all on fire. I don't know. So, yes, when it comes to the winter stuff, here's day one. Heavy snow possible in quite a bit of areas. It's all of the white hatched areas. And apparently there's three low pressure systems or fronts. Systems. 
I think a front is not a low pressure thing. Low pressure system, we'll call it that anyway, is what's like bringing this in. You know, low pressure, it's like acts like a sink, draws a lot of stuff. Sink drain acts like a sink drain. I don't know. I have to get a, a textbook one of these days, find out what any of this means. Tomorrow, lots of heavy snow possible again. Day three, it moves over there. Here is day one's hydrometeorological prediction center composite map. So what does this mean? Four inch uh, snow, accumulation of at least four inches, eight inches, 12 inches, and then freezing rain of 0.25 inches. At least, yes, that's what it says. Anyway, so the red area is high probability of at least four inches, and then the largest chance is a moderate risk of at least eight. Apparently there isn't really a chance of 12 inches or more, but there is a slight risk of at least 0.25 inches of freezing rain and, or ice. Ice accumulation, that's what it officially says. So, that sucks. But in tornado news, hey, well, I mean, you should never totally turn your back on a tornado, especially if it's right there. Obviously, literally don't turn your back on a tornado. Or you should, so you can run for cover. Anyway, so green, pretty much for a while. So today, here's your generic thunderstorm area, but nothing predicted to be severe. Tomorrow, no thunderstorms forecast. Let's check the, the long one, potential too low. Oh, and I should also say, when it comes to day one, there are, what, five, four or five outlooks issued. So if things change in the middle of the day, they can update the outlook and give you, you know, if the, like, for instance, if something drops off and then, hey, there isn't a chance, you can kind of cool your jets. Is that an expression? I know. A little bit and, you know, breathe a sigh of relief. Or sometimes they might upgrade and say, ah, Armageddon is coming today. Sorry. You know, the models now show Armageddon is on the horizon or something. Anyway, yeah, so you should totally pay attention to weather. Weather is at wickedwix.com, W-I-C-K-E-D-W-X, or it's at the obvious, if you're American, of course, weather.gov. And of course, weather is always at weather.gov, regardless of where you live in the country, it just might be in the country. Regardless of where you live on the globe, it just might be completely irrelevant to your location. Anywho. So, pay attention. That's today's lesson, and I hope we're not all dead tomorrow as of the Armageddon-type related reasons, right?